What up, guys? This is Jody with the Whiskey Rebellion Podcast. This is episode 100. Hard to believe we made it that far and also uh, had uh, had livers to sustain this, this progress. Uh, but anyway, guys, this is going to be a fun night. I am actually going to have two different sips of uh, one of a midnight, or I'm sorry, midwinter night's drum. Uh, it's courtesy of my trade with uh, Corey. I'm going to have a little bit of a sip of that tonight, and then I'm going to have uh, Chuck, the godfather, sent me out. Oh, by the way, I got a fascinating story about him. Um, so he told me why he has the picture of the Triple H. Do you know this, Billy? Yes, I do. Yes. I, and, and so now I want to see the dude. Like, <laughs> like he told me what he was over and he was living in, uh, in, in Japan and he was on an airline or something like that. And some, he, somebody was taking like pictures and selfies with him thinking he was Triple H. From WWE, for those who don't watch wrestling here in the South, we, we love all that wrestling <laughs> stuff, you know, and all that. But anyway, so uh, he's uh, he's all was tell me about it. And then I was like, that makes perfect sense that he has like a driver's license photo as his picture on Facebook. Yeah. And it's because he looks like Triple H. But here with the broadcast, that's the Godfather. And we all love him. Anyhow, he sent me this store pick uh, from from Massachusetts. So I'm going to, I'm going to have a sip of that probably first. Uh, it's Eagle rare. I love this stuff, but Hey, before we do all that guys, welcome to the show, Jonathan, what are you having? And, uh, you know, say hello. Well, hello everybody. Um, happy 100th show. So I'm doing a little wood for reserve master's collection. Um, I don't know. So before the show, I was a big wood for guy had no idea that they made a collection like this. Um, so I don't have a lot of information about this particular um, uh, bottle. Um, I know they just released another one uh, that everybody's going crazy about within the last two months. Um, but that's what I'm sipping on, sitting at 123 proof. Which one is it? Because I have several and I love them. And you could have them too if you came to my house, but you don't. Uh, but anyhow, which one is that? So, so I, again, I, I don't know. I got it in... I got it in 2020. Um, but it's not like a, it's not like a double oak barrel or it's no. not a sherry cast or they have a rum cast. Mm -mm. Hmm. I hadn't had yeah, that one yet. Sure. So you said it's 122? 123.6. Yep. Nice. I like that. that. I bet that is fantastic. You have to let us know what you think about it. Um, I want to go to Corey next. Corey's new on the show. We just met. He, uh, he's how I got the, uh, the midwinter night's drum. Um, we worked out a, a deal. He wanted um, he wanted a bottle of uh, Weller 12. Are you going to try that tonight too? Probably so. Thinking about it. Cool. Well, you, I'm, no pressure on you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, but if you do, you know, it is what it is. But uh, he wanted that. I had a couple of bottles. And I was like, hey, I don't have. Uh, I, I'm always looking for it to the midwinter's uh, night drum. And I know there's a bunch of different acts and scenes. So we'll have a little bit of that here in a moment. But uh, welcome to the show, Corey, uh, for your first time. I know you're going to have a really small collection of reflection for a week when we get mm -hmm. to you. But uh, hey, what are you having tonight? So I'm uh, going to start off with a uh, kind of courtesy, kind of like you said, Jody, of a little handshake of um, 2020 George T. Stag. Um, my, my boys play in the uh, Sweet 16 and 615. So uh, Figured it was a good time to uh, have that little pour as well. So, um, and probably going to switch after that to a uh, little bit of this Elijah Craig toaster barrel that I have open. So, uh, I don't really have too much info on the George T. Stag, though, uh, Jody, because you have that. <laughs> so, you may be able to help uh, people with some info on that one. Well, I'm going to let you pull your own notes from it when you uh, when you go to it. But I will tell you this. I know your boys are playing today uh, against UCLA. And I yep. never, ever, 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 ever pull against the Pac-12 because I went to USC. However, and I never, ever, 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 ever pull for Alabama. But I am today. Because there's nothing worse in this world than fuck luck. <laughs> Period. The only thing worse than fuck luck is Notre Dame. And I'm Catholic, too. So that works out. Anyway, uh, Mao. Hello. What's up, brother? All good. I'm uh, drinking my daily supper, as uh, as we've discovered this year. Um, this is uh, one that I've discovered, the Wild Turkey Long Branch, to be my everyday, um, 86 proof. Uh, there's nothing I can say about it that we haven't already said. 
fabulous bourbon. Um, and again, considering it's a celebrity bourbon, um, just absolutely awesome. For my second or possibly third, I don't know, I'm going to open up a special one. Now, this is my Gordon and McPhail barrel pick uh, of Blanton Standard, single barrel that, uh, that my mother bought me for Christmas. Still fantastic. unopened. Still unopened. But uh, it's got a lovely little, lovely little golden sticker on it there. I think I'm going to break that one open to celebrate the 100. Nice. That's the, um, exactly would, the reason why I'm doing the the midwinter night strum is I was like, yeah, well, the reason, you know, 100. <laughs> the reason I'm episode. doing. So go ahead. I'm sorry. The reason I'm drinking the reason I'm drinking the wild turkey is just to wind you up because uh, turkey season coming up and all that. Yeah, yeah. Anybody, we do anybody have... that's been watching, anybody that has been watching the show for the last hundred episodes, know I like when you up about not being able to shoot a turkey. Yep, and that's true. I have not killed one yet. I've killed everything else in the world, but I cannot. Well, I'm not killed any turkey purposely. Uh, but we have yeah. discovered on the other shows that I have killed two, um, and we'll just go with that. But they were not on yeah. purpose, <laughs> and both of them were with my truck. So I'm gonna drive my truck to the location on Saturday. So uh, anyway, <laughs> Mark, how's What's Arizona, man? Hey, hey, hey. shirt as always so i am sipping round one will be fiddler unison so you good. sent me some of that it is so good and um round two will be idle hands thanks to the godfather i was you gonna, gonna open, i was gonna open presidential but i couldn't get the damn thing. well you froze up but i agree with you that, that taking the top <laughs> off the wax was a nightmare Damn. How about, how about, how about, how about slice my hand open? I was like, what in the world? It was apparently the Clinton presidential because he just disappeared. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But we're not going to get political. Um, but anyway, Mark, as always, I love the shirts. Uh, I know that's kind of what you're known for. So uh, let's go to Jeff. Welcome to show, well, man. I am starting out with a bottle I just picked up, uh, Davidson Reserve, which is a uh, distillery here in Tennessee. Uh, Nashville. Yes, yes. Um, this is their Tennessee Straight Sour Mish Mash uh, whiskey. Uh, a, a local group that just started up here in Wilson County did this pick, and and it's a five year old, hundred and eighteen point four five proof. A um, little young, but it's it, it's got some interesting notes and taste to it. Um, and uh, in honor of uh, Jody and starting this, my next pour is going to be some Jack Daniels single yes. barrel yes. Uh, from from. I uh, was going to go for the barrel history. proof. <laughs> the uh, label, the King of Bourbon. Yeah, obviously you don't really think Jody. that highly of me. So um, let's go to the <laughs> next person. Hey, uh, Rob, you're on mute. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Doing well, brother. By doing, doing fantastic. So tonight I am uh, I am starting off the evening with with my reflection, my daily sipper that I found this year, a little Weller mm -hmm. Special Reserve. When those of us spent a lot of spend a lot of time in Ohio, so I, I can usually get some version of the Special Reserve or the Antique One Hundred Seven, as you can tell behind me. I have quite mm -hmm. a few backups back there. And you've also um, uh, helped me out in that collection too. I appreciate it. No and problem. John and probably Mark, <laughs> probably I Billy. Am, uh, <laughs> I'm after that going to go to the, the other thing that I found mm -hmm. that I really like this year is the Maker's Mark. This is the, one of their stave series. This is the, an Ohio pick that was called bread pudding. So mm -hmm. I think after I have some Weller, I'm going to go to that next. So, you know, great year. I came real close to picking for tonight's show as the drink. Um, the only reason why I did is quite it's two, it was part it was two parts. One was in honor of Corey being here, I was gonna have a little bit of sip of the of the one that he and I traded. Uh, the other one is because the Godfather. I mean, a boy sends me uh, you know, sends me a bottle that's and he's like expects nothing in return. And first of all, it's fantastic. And he's right, it does have a little bit sweeter notes to it. Than, uh, than your typical Eagle Rare, but it's fantastic. And it has just all the other um, tasting notes that you would typically find, but I don't want to talk about all that. But I, what I was going to say is I came close to picking Maker's Mark because in my opinion, 
they have had the best year of 2020 than of any other Absolutely. bourbon. I don't know that mm-hmm. you could beat them without with with limited marketing that's went out. Everything that they put on the market is now become difficult to find, and it's all freaking fantastic. And if you get a chance to get definitely what is the SCPR five? Oh my God, that that was the 2020 pick. <clears throat> I've got a bottle of that. It's every, it's one of those ones, like, I think, I'm not sure if Mal or Billy said it first, but you have a sip of it, and you're like, you slap yourself, and you put it yeah, far away. Out of, put it away. Yeah. 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 That is, it, I agree. That it's is mm-hmm. by far the best bourbon, mainstream bourbon that has come out, in my opinion, in the market this year, for sure. And uh, I have heard the community's good. I have a private yeah. select that, uh, that Mark sent me from uh, California. And so uh, probably the only person with that. But hey, Billy, welcome to the show, yeah. man. Uh, what are you having tonight? Well, gentlemen, first and foremost, thank you guys for having me. I've had a wonderful time being a part of the show. Um, I want to raise a glass to our guy, David. Godspeed to you, brother. Yes. Um, Quick. Uh, I am having from <laughs> the Godfather. He sent me a sample pack of Whistle Pig. Uh, this is the 12 year that I'm having now. Um, and for my second one, and it just was totally just, I just picked it up. Uh, the Reverie <laughs> is going to be my second one. So I, 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 I it wasn't even messing with you. I just, no, but really, I had it sitting here and I was like, okay, <laughs> that's going to be my second choice. But I happened to see that you liked my post <laughs> prior to this show. Yes. Subliminal. Uh, it's a subliminal. So just well, happened. See, you know, Jody. See, what had happened is. There, there's so <laughs> many of your posts that I love. You know, I just want you to hold me the way you hold that log when you're standing there. I, you know, hey, you know, you know, I would, that's, I, I, that's, I would do it. That's all the brother wants, just a little love. That's I, I would hold you like I hold my wood. I'm with you. <laughs> just with your with your buttered calves and oh. <laughs> and for people in need translating, what he said was buttered <laughs> calves. <laughs> Listen, I'm sure yeah. Jody's gonna hold me like that after I make. Uh, pork bellies with sunny side up eggs for him for breakfast. Oh my! Yeah. And hey, Billy, you were like that my... before you made him. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh man! So, but hey, hold anything you want. Yeah. <clears throat> so <laughs> first of all, I want to say um, on the back to the the Godfather real fast. Uh, Chuck, I know you're listening to the show. I know you watch the show, and I appreciate and I appreciate you guys all sharing the show because. Our YouTube channel has grown. I don't know if you guys have noticed the likes to the page, but just this week alone, uh, (laughs) since Monday till today, Mm -hmm. 100 and set, you know, actually I I, I was going to call you out for that because I thought it was you. I was like, I was like, I was talking about it earlier and I was like, man, how in the hell are we getting so many likes? And I'm like, it has to be Mark. He knows everybody like in, in every state. He just like, you drink bourbon, you need to be part of this page. And so he's like, got everybody following it. And so just this week alone, we went from, whatever the number was to 179 more likes on the page that their people are following it just this week alone. And that's I would fantastic. Attribute that definitely to Mark, but um, if you can see geogra- uh, sort of geographic, anything uh, sort of any geographic stats on there, we do have quite a, 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 a contingent. Few. A contingent. We, do have a, we do have a growing contingent. Yes. Nice. Um, I'm, I'm, push, I'm pushing it over here as well, dude. Hey, you know, I, I even though it is the tread on me flag, I it's my third favorite flag. <laughs> <laughs> and I love those guys. We'll come save their ass anytime they want us to. <laughs> let's not get into this again, dude. It's what it's one hundredth anniversary. Let's not spoil it. Let's not. Yeah. But we've talked about that on the other ninety nine episodes. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I don't want to spoil it tonight, though. <laughs> anyway, so. I do want to kind of go around the horn real quick uh, in, a, in a fast question and answer type thing. Um, Corey must be watching the game. Are you watching the game over your shoulder? Huh? Are you watching the game over your shoulder? No, I was listening. I can hear some sound going on in the living room. Oh, okay. If you can get robbed, <laughs> man, pay attention to me. Bourbon, I'm just playing. Bourbon <laughs> the bourbon thieves? I, I, can hear, I can hear whistles going off, yeah. Um, Corey, don't let him – push you around when the predator's on he's watching it oh i am i have the tv i have a tv right here in front of me so when the preds are playing which is at seven o'clock tonight um but when they're on a four game winning streak uh and uc sorrows has the best save percentage since the, the beginning of well when he came back from his injury but the since in march he has the highest or the best save percentage but that's beyond the 
uh, the scope of our conversation tonight. So I want to go real quick around the uh, the horn, and I just want to hear one thing that you've learned. The caps, I love Ovechkin, but uh, we're not talking about the caps tonight. <laughs> we're not even talking about the Preds tonight. Uh, but anyway, so jo I'm going to start here with Jonathan. I'm going to go Jonathan, Mal, Jeff, Corey, Mark, <coughs> Rob, and and uh, Billy. I'm going to go in that order. What's one the word one answers? thing? What? You were second. One word answers? Yeah, no, one, one, word one, answers. one word or, or, or statement. I don't care, but the one thing you've learned or you've acquired from this group in the, in the past year, Jonathan. Yeah. So I, I think I can already est, uh, estimate how, what everybody else is going to say, but um, I think for me, it's um, be open uh, to new experiences. Um, you know, some new flavor profiles. Um, you may have been a, a Woodford or a maker's guy, you know, prior to the show, like, like myself, but now, you know, I've been able to branch out ba uh, based on y'all's feedback <clears throat> and recommendations uh, to discover, you know, new tastes that I've, I've enjoyed. So, Very cool. Very cool. And I'd agree with that. I, I, I'd second that, uh, that sentiment. What about you there, Mal? I'm doing three words, dude. Um, well, three and a half words. I'd say connection would be the first word. But the half word that I would add up that is reconnection because you and I hadn't spoken for a while. That's true. So. We've reconnected and I've connected to the rest of the guys. Um, education um, and brotherhood. It's four words. Well, I guess Don't it's three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm Don't sorry. include the and, but yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> uh, that, that's it for me. Okay. Jeff. So it's kind of hard to say one thing because I've only been a part of the group for three ish weeks or so. Um, but uh, I would say that what I've gotten so far is I've been challenged on some of my ideas. And that's what sharpens you. That's what you make, makes you think about what you believe and what is, is that challenge. In the group, in the VIP chat, you bring something up and somebody's going to challenge you on it. You have to defend your ideas and you have to adapt. That's what, so far, the little bit I've been in, it, the group has done for me. I dig, I dig. It's, uh, go it's, ahead. it's done in a grown-up, it's done in a grown-up fashion, though. It's, uh, yeah, I, sometimes. I, I, most, of the, most of the time. Most, <laughs> grown most of the fashion, time. yes. <laughs> most, most of the time, yeah. yeah. In comparison, in comparison so, to other groups. So, that, but, that may be that true. Again, we bust each other's balls, but we yeah, know but we're doing it in a, in, in a, in a, yeah loving way absolutely we you don't know, feel, we don't feel like we're being attacked but we are kind of being challenged on what we're bringing in i, I, I think one of the things you point out there that's very important uh to our our viewers and listeners is we that is true we are we are we may bust each other's chops and we may talk a lot of smack or me specifically when it comes to um uh jack daniels or something like that but we don't knock people for their taste. You know, like you, you guys, you guys love, uh, actually everybody here, but me loves Jack Daniels. All right. And I am like, there's at least 46 bottles better than Jack Daniels. All right. At least that's the way I look at it. And it, but that's okay. Because where I was going with that is what, what I don't see is people doing like they do on the other pages where Blanton's like, it's obviously a tater drink or, I, you know, I can't believe you'd spend that much money on it or this, that, and whatever. First of all, you tell me where in Tennessee you're going to find it for under $79 a bottle. All right. I know MSRP is one thing. You tell me that store, it's going to sell it to you for what it's supposed to be, which is $42.99. Because I haven't seen that in at least yeah. five years. You, usually if I see it at what I, so I always thought Blanton's MSRP was supposed to be around 60, 65, because that's the least amount I've seen it around here allegedly it's it's uh it's 42.99 i have that's only UK, ever UK, uk price is about 60 65 but yeah that's that's after the import and after all that sort of jazz so yeah mm -hmm. yeah so but um so and, and so where i was going with that is what i like about this group is there's people have different taste buds on, on all of this and uh like for example i was as soon as billy was talking about whistle pig i was like man i'm not a big fan but if you want some open bottles i can put some tape on them i have the 12 10, 15, and I'll send them all to you because I'll be honest with you, they've been open for at least five years. 
Uh, I bought them thinking, well, they got a, they got a high price point. They got to be good. You know, cause that was when I first started into the bourbon world mm-hmm. five, six years ago. And, you know, the higher it costs, obviously it's better, you know? Yeah, of and, course. <laughs> and so, and so, um, so I bought them and they've I was age, like, they've got age statements. They must be yeah, awesome. Yeah. And so I bought them and I was like, oh my God, this is horrible. The only one I've ever liked is the, um, is the 10 year rye store pick, uh, which was fantastic. So anyway, moving on, Corey. I know it's been short for you, but you kind of been on a short journey with the, with the, the thing. What brought, I'll ask your question differently. What brought you to this group? I don't know if it's kind of necessarily what brought me to it because I didn't necessarily know it yet. Um, I would say just kind of from our conversation, just kind of, I guess the way you describe the group, kind of, I guess, piqued my interest, you know, to begin with. So I want to just kind of check it out, see what it was about. Um, but I think, you know, kind of one of the the phrases I would uh, kind of echo what Mal said with a uh, brotherhood kind of in the week that I've been here, I'm still trying to get familiar with everybody's name. So I apologize on that front, you know, uh, right away. But I know there's been a, um, a guy in the group who's, I guess, been kind of going through some shortcomings, you know, here as of late. And um, it's been pretty cool to see, you know, all the guys in the group kind of rally behind that guy and see if he needs anything, check in with him, make sure he's okay. So, I guess one of the things mm-hmm. I've been able to see just in that week, um, you know, once again, kind of like Mal said, it'll be brotherhood. Seems like all the guys in the group care about each other and uh, obviously want to have a good time on top of that. So, yeah. And, and, and uh, though it was already, uh, it was already put out earlier with, with Billy, um, David's doing well. I talked to him um, almost every day, except for the day he's, uh, he's, he's doing real well. Uh, he's feeling good. Um, he, his biggest problem right now is, uh, is sleep. I can imagine. Um, having work on your spine would probably be some areas where you might not feel the most comfortable, uh, in certain positions. And for me, I like to sleep on my side. So I can't imagine if I had some work on, and I need some work on my C4 and, you know, he had C four, five, and six, I think, I believe I'll let him correct that if he needs to, but I think it was C4. I mean, I'm not C, but L four, five, and six worked on. Um, and that's right there at your hips and, I can only imagine how that would, how that would feel, but yes, we do check on each other. And, and you know, and what sucks about tonight being the hundredth episode in our, we just passed our year mark is yeah. the very first show had me, David and Mal on it, you know? Yeah. And we had a good time. <laughs> yeah. It's three amigos, oh, we had a good time. And, 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 but David's still part of the show. He's still part of the brotherhood mm. and he, he always will is, be. Yeah. So, yeah. and so Corey, I appreciate that. Mark, uh, let me put it differently. Corey, I appreciate that observation because we do truly care about everybody in the VIP chat. And if you're not part of the VIP, well, that's not true. We don't care about everybody, but we do act like we do. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you figure out who that person is. Anyway, Mark. <laughs> Why do I have Carly Simon singing in my brain right now? Just, oh. I, it sounds like a uh, issue. Mark, okay. go ahead. Medic, medic, <laughs> Bourbon Brothers. Yep. Is that, is that that what you got, Bourbon Brothers? Bourbon Brothers. Cool. I dig it. This is my guys. Yep, it is. That is true. It is definitely, let me put that out there too. Uh, it's, yeah, definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's definitely a, a brotherhood for sure. Rob, mm-hmm. what about you, man? Like everyone else said, I, I've, it's <clears throat> been the, a great camaraderie. Um, yeah. You know, it, I joined in probably late March. I, I wasn't far far after you guys started. You, you weren't. Yeah. That's true. You weren't. You, you were there within the third or fourth episode that we ever did. I mean, I can go back and look. Maybe one of our viewers can go back and look and they can just go on YouTube and go, all right, all of this. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I, I've enjoyed the knowledge that I've got from the group. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you talked about you know everyone's the, the, you've got your Blanton's fanboys you've got the uh, but <laughs> learning about other things that are out there mm-hmm. you know yeah heard about horse soldier and uh, I had some horse soldiers sent to me from from our brother down in Florida thank yeah. you my friend and uh, I tell you what I like horse soldier I really do that is fantastic uh it's fantastic I, I don't know if it's a uh, MGP or not but I know it's uh I'd have to look on the bottle, but that, that batch that they did that I have all three 
um, except for the commander, as we talked about. Um, it's it's really good. It is for a younger whiskey. I mean, it's it's all age four years minimum, but for a younger whiskey, it is really, really good. But hey, uh, let's go to Billy. By the way, before you start, Billy, I was when I was thinking of bottles and what I had learned from this year and what I wanted to take as my most memorable thing. And I was sitting there, I was like, what do I need to pick? Do I need to pick stag? I've had a great season, this, that, and whatever. Do I need to pick my straight from the barrel? And I came real close to just bringing over one of the bottles of uh, Cafe 305 because that's been fantastic. And if you don't have one of those, if, I got If I deal. had one in the fridge, if I had one in the fridge, I would have done exactly well, see, that. that was exactly what, what I was thinking. I was like, well, I don't have any that aren't open. I was like... So do you get one like with all the sticky stuff on the side and you like show that like this is what I most valuable thing, you know, yeah. and then the whole, and the whole time you're sitting there licking it like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Billy, go with it, man. Well, uh, I'll, I'll give you guys a brief summary. Um, I don't even remember when I came in. We've had so many wonderful shows. Um, and like most of us, I uh, kind of an endless hunting season because we get stuff sent from the godfather almost at will it is not a, a odd thing to come home and see a box sitting on my porch from somebody mark <laughs> you know jonathan you know i mean just rob it, it's just fantastic um and you know that's not even the, the cherry on top of this whole group um it's the how personal we've gotten with each other you know, we can all sit here and share some personal moments with each other. You know, Rob, you know, Rob shared stuff with us, you know, uh, you know, Mark showing off his grandkids, you know, Jonathan's little girl, you know, mm -hmm. I have my wife on the show a couple of times, you know, when we've gone through something, we've all kind of rallied around each other. Um, Absolutely. And to me, I would say that's really the cherry on top. Because, you know, one of the major things about this group is that it's never about money. It's never been about money. It's, mm -hmm. it's never been about that. And listen, let's face it, in this world, cash is king. You know, people are not mm -hmm. really willing to do anything for free. <clears throat> so, you know, when I was able to get my hands on a case of Heaven Hill and send it out to different people, it was like my pleasure. Like, I was happy to do that, you know? Um, and it's kind of like our own little mafia because we're in our own. <laughs> we don't want the Rico cities. act going on us. We do not want that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a minimum of 10 years. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, again, you know, like everybody's mentioned, the, the brotherhood is just something that's really, really different. You know, I cannot even speak to the support I've gotten from you guys, Jonathan went on to my website, Wrecking Ball. I mean, Mark orders almost every other week. You know, Rob, I mean, Jody, you're, you're my first, you know, subscription person. So, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where... We took 305 Global as well, dude. Yeah, yeah exactly. We did. Yeah, you're in Australia <laughs> too, right? So, yeah, absolutely. It, it's one of those things awesome. that... Can you put a dollar on it? Absolutely not. So, you know, really kind of just to summarize it, the complete and utter support that I've gotten from you guys, just in my personal or my business, you know, you guys have been there, you know, you guys celebrated my wife and having her on the show. So, I mean, I mean, really, well, she's my hall pass. So I definitely, uh, celebrate there you her. go. <laughs> She's laughing at you right now. She's, She's only laughing because little... she can visualize it. But hey, listen. Um, <laughs> but but anyway, um, so so real quick, because I want you to plug uh, Cafe 305. If you would tell our viewers because they can't see the chat, will you okay, tell them so where they can they can get your, your um, product? If you want to get your hands on some of the barbecue sauce, all you have to do is go to cafe305bbq.com. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram, Cafe305BBQ. Uh, you can also look me up on YouTube, uh, Be Good to Yourself, where I do a lot of cooking tips, uh, kind of go through the gamut of a bunch of things. Um, uh, so, you know, it's easy to find, e easy to order. It's great sauce. I guarantee you once you taste it, you'll, you'll never, you'll, you won't ever change. 
and so, and his website and the president porn. he won't want to come in front of the camera but of course cafe 305 it's not hard for you to get your hands on it if you order it today it goes out tomorrow and, I think that's and, fantastic. and his website has food porn Yes, that's the most the website thing. does have food porn on yes. it. So food porn. <laughs> it's rated H. <laughs> I'm hungry. Uh, uh, pause, Jeff, Corey. So anytime Billy says be good to yourself, you have to take a drink. Yeah. Yes. So we're trying to do a provisional one real fast. Keep, keep it up, Billy. Take my drink. <laughs> All right. So I want to go back to Corey real fast before I tell you what I learned this year in my reflection. So, Corey, so, uh, oh, there's my hall pass. How you doing, girlfriend? <laughs> I'm doing well. She gets more and more beautiful every day. <laughs> Thank you. In cool. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, Corey, hey, uh, Bill, the stag. Question. Does okay. that beef brisket dinner make it to Tennessee? I was wondering that myself. Yeah, that beef brisket dinner make it to Tennessee? Listen. You know, I have people who want to order brisket. I have people who want to order uh, whole uh, pulled porks. Um, and I'm getting the logistics of it now. Because with food, it's a little bit different. So you got to have the right cryovac machine and the whole nine. And more than anything, I never, ever want to have the label of getting somebody sick. So if somebody orders it, it's going to be like FedEx the next day you get it. It won't be regular mail. So... Yeah. So yes, but we got to pay for the the, the next day shift. Of course, we'll, we'll we'll work it out. I mean, I got a, I got a pretty good. Hey, I'm all right with that. I just want to make sure. It, it's one of those things. Because, you, know, you know, a lot of the the big barbecue places like out of Texas, they all will send you brisket and stuff like that through the mail, but it's quite expensive. Yeah. Um. So for me, I'm doing it local, and it makes it a little easier. But like. Uh, not to plug anybody, but there's a really, really big, well-known, famous barbecue place in Texas. Um, if you was to order a medium brisket from him, uh, I think it's almost two hundred and seventy dollars. I stand, is it? Huh? No, 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 God, no. We'll have to fill, we'll have to fill, uh, we'll have to fill uh, Corey in on stand here at a later point. But hey, I, I do want to go back to Corey real fast. Get us back on track, um, which we have a problem doing with our shenanigans. But um, <laughs> Corey, so you you got to try the GT uh, the George T. Stag uh, twenty twenty uh, BTAC. Yeah, I provide you that sample. What did you think of it? It's good. Definitely, uh, definitely get a lot of the spice and uh, some of the vanilla, but uh, it's good. I can definitely get some of the heat, but it ends up uh, being kind of smooth towards the end but it's good really good i like it a lot yeah it's probably one of out of this year it's probably one of my favorites um that i picked up um you know every, we talked about this um when we met in person the um complexity that, that's in it it's hard to describe like uh, like one of the things i would i would have pulled from it is and i said this i think last show is the raisin it has raisin at the end of it at least for me um and but you could ask you know, six different people, their thoughts, if you're sitting around and, and six different people may give you six different notes on it that they picked up. And I love that complexity, which is why I think that the 19, everybody gives a bad, you know, they sit there, excuse me, and they're sit there and they're like, well, it's, it's lower proof. I'm like, but that's not really why you want stag is because of the proof. You want it because of the complexity uh, of the tasting notes unless you're drunk and if you just want to get hammered then you're right buy yourself some pga and move the hell on put some fruit in it and a shitty cooler and let's just make a good day out of this you know I i'm with you on that that's not that's not my jam so i was curious what your thoughts were I'm, i appreciate you uh you, you telling me that and can, uh, I, can, I, can i say one thing of course Please. listen my guy jonathan my guy i tell you that sent me this lever's fork and i will tell you one thing if you can't find 10 good things to say just from the smelling of this, I would say slap yourself and give your bottle away. And then when you taste it, if you can't find another 10 wonderful things to say about it, slap yourself and give your bottle away again. Yeah, so, I, 
I'm going to I'm going to agree with that in that sentiment. Of course, you know that because we had an entire show where I actually gave <laughs> uh, Jonathan a I think a, a Weller 12 one for one trade for a uh, leaper sport because I couldn't find it at the time. Of course, now I know how to find it. Um, and it's it's readily available here in the middle of Tennessee area. And it is fantastic. And um, the Godfather's getting a bottle sent out to him tomorrow. Um, and it'll be heading up to the, the great state of Massachusetts. But, uh, but anyway, so everybody got to say what they enjoyed or what they, their reflection is on uh, 2020 and this bar cast. I will tell you what it is for me. First, um, it is a, I'm going to go back to what Miles said with the reconnection. It is that because for whatever reason, he and I met in 2006 and uh, at Playa de Carmen, we had a great time. Uh, I was the crazy American or the dirty American, however you want to put it. And we had, yeah, a little, a little bit of both. Um, we had a great time. Um, and you sit there and you look at it and you go, why didn't we use technology that we have here? Like the, this technology has created what I consider the best virtual bar. I'm actually hanging out with people I want to hang out with in a bar. Yeah. And here's the other thing. I ain't spending nothing. All right. And, and like, like I have it all, I mean, I'm not spending excess of retail prices on bar drinks and I have zero chance of getting a DUI. You know, um, I'm sitting around my house. I'm talking to the people I want to talk to and I'm having a good time. I'm actually sitting in my office tonight, as you guys know, but I have the opportunity just to sit here and just have a good time, talk to the people I enjoy, use technology for my advantage and, and, and sit here and go, you know what, this is what I want to do. Um, as for the season, this group has made this the <laughs> best season I have ever had. Um, I mean, when I would challenge almost anybody when they've ever had an opportunity to have two stags, Two uh, straight from the barrels, uh, midwinter night straw, uh, a plethora amount of uh, Weller 12 and uh, 107. And the majority of it, out of all those, I wouldn't say the majority, but I'd say at least 40% of what I just said at MSRP or just given to me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with no, no ex expectation of return. Um, had the opportunity, like we talked about on the last show with uh, Mark. Mark was because in Arizona, I was with, I had the opportunity to get every single bottle of the uh, smoke wagon sent to my house directly. Just open it up and Mark and, uh, and the Godfather both, well, it's actually said Mark, Godfather, and Billy, they put packaging where they're, it's like they, I think they're sitting around laughing about it. They're like, watch this shit. This would be funny as hell. All right. <laughs> so they tape it. And they wrap it and they tape it. And then like one time Mark used like, apparently he was staying in San Francisco, I believe yep. at the time he sent me like the towels that he had in his room. And it's like wrapped in that too. And it's like, and, and then he, he uses like box tape around it. So it's like, and it's not wrapped like four times with box tape. It's like, like 4,000 and, and one times you know, with box tape. And I'm like, I, I'm sitting there trying to open it. And it's, it, there's like not even enough room to like stretch it enough. So like you have to have a Zippo like, like you know, uh, knife to cut it all. But my point being is that the connectivity of this group has made, and, and, and this is strictly my observation, opinion, however you want to look at it, has made this the greatest bar that you could ever have. Because we have people, no one is sitting in my home in this bar right now. I have one of my guests is from, is in England. One's in Arizona, one's in Miami, one's in currently at his house in Pennsylvania. Uh, one's in Fairview, one's in, Corey, I think you live in Franklin. Is that right? What you told me? Sorry, I muted myself. No, I'm near downtown, basically. Okay, so downtown Nashville. And then, Jeff, you live, I don't know where you live, but you Mount live in Tennessee. Juliet. Mount Juliet? Yeah. 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 So you're out there where my mom lives. So you're close to, uh, to old Jay Cooper. Yep. You may not ever be on the show again after last show. He was like, oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oops. So, Jody. Yeah, here's a couple things that as an as as somebody new. Oh, hold on a second. Puffery was another thing. I didn't even know that existed. And I I teach business. I had no idea that there was a word called puffery. <laughs> You're so, welcome. Yeah, and it was when we went out for that tasting that day, and then, right. uh, and cigars, and and I don't smoke, and I'm allergic to smoke, and and then for the next day I was paying for it in bed all day long because I couldn't breathe. Um, but yeah, so these are the things I, I learned. But anyway, Jeff, go ahead. You were getting ready so, to say something. So 
I, as, as somebody new, and I'm, I'm going to guess that Corey is kind of wondering the same thing. There's two things that I think that would be great for us as newbies and, and people listening to learn. One, how did you come up with the concept and start this idea for the podcast? And then two, how did each person here become involved with the podcast? I, I love those questions. I'm gonna let the second one be. Questions. Yeah, I'm gonna let the second one be answered by the actual viewers. All right. I, or, I agree. I think that by, should be by the mm -hmm. by the participants in the broadcast. All right. So I came up with the idea. Um, me and David, and we've talked about this uh, numerous times. David and I are on, and we're not getting political. That's the reason why we made the show non-political. Uh, but but those that follow know that David and I couldn't be more on the polar opposite of uh, our political affiliations. All right. However, I do believe, and, and I think he would second this if he was here tonight, and I think and I feel more than confident he would. If we were both in Congress, we would have the ability to, to come up with, uh, I want to hear about that here in a minute, Mark, but uh, we would be able to come up with legislation that works. And we used to have a podcast called Whiskey and Politics. And uh, the reason why we stopped doing that is because you can't, you just can't mix whiskey and politics. You just can't do it. It's not, it's not feasible. All right. Uh, it's like complete dumb fuckery the whole time going on. All right. And, and uh, if you've never heard of that word, look it up. It is, it is, uh, I, I did use it grammatically correct. Um, so anyhow, that we, we had, we, we, we used to get together at least once, maybe twice a week at my bar downstairs. And we just sit and chat and talk about, he would talk about how he hated orange man bad. And I would talk about how I like lower taxes. And, and we just, we just talked about this and freedom. And, um, it, it, we would just have these conversations and then it was like COVID hit like, well, I don't know what to do on my Tuesdays anymore or my <laughs> Wednesdays. I got all this time, you know, and, but, I, but I needed it at the time. Cause I was also working on my dissertation. And so it was kind of one of those games where I was like, I, but I, you kind of need that well being, that connectivity, that social interaction uh, to maintain that copacetic thought process that you want to have within your head. Um, of being able to say things that are well articulated and be able to have some thought process that's outside your own echo chamber. And I don't mean that in a political aspect. I mean it in the in the in the aspect of of just having thought that isn't just your own, if that makes any sense. So I reached out, I reached out to him and I was like, how do we do this on Zoom? And he's like, or or FaceTime. We'll just we'll just have a FaceTime virtual drink. And and initially uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna reach out to Bob. And I and I talked to Mal. Somebody's in a windstorm. That's me. Okay. Okay. Cool. So on cue, I reached out to Mal, and uh, and he was like, "Hey, I would love to do this." And so we started with, um, as you can, as the the people who have been following us from day one, and even the ones that haven't. If you were to go back and look, you can see where we tried to do it live feeds and stuff like that on Facebook, and then I record the live feed and I put it on YouTube and so on and so on, and. It was kind of very, you know, crawl, walk, run type of approach. And now we're gotten to the to the point to where we're having people who want to come on the show. Like we've had doctors, uh, doctors of fermentation that's been on the show. Uh, the, that was funny because we had the entire show was completely silent uh, while he was talking. It was like we're sitting in class. We're like, oh, my God, this most interesting thing I've ever heard in my life. And where other people would probably go. That's a lot. Like, like, yeah, it was, but it was so much. It, he could have he, held, he held court. He held yeah. court very yeah. well. Yes. And then we had, we had uh, Axe in the Oak come on, uh, their president, owner of their company. Uh, we did a, a virtual, but live tasting, blind tasting uh, against um, Heaven's Door, I believe it was. Um, and for the record, I still think Axe in the Oak was much better product than Heaven's Door, which is from Tennessee. Um, just my opinion. But it, it, it kind of just grew as something that we could get together where it was just a bunch, where we just could share ideas and, and still talk, but take out the, the one entity that can cause strife in a relationship, which for me and David was politics. I mean, Mal, we've already beat their ass, so we didn't have to worry about him. But, you know. Yeah, but then he sent us Megan. He did. He did. He did. That's like the gift that keeps on giving. It's like having the clap. Um, sleeper, sleeper agent. Uh, sleeper agent. You send her here first. Oh, my God. It's the worst. 
But anyway, so that's yeah. I'm not gonna give a I'm not gonna give a Hercules to that. I'm really not. That's a horrible thing. No, no, no. Uh, clap. Yeah, no the clap maybe, but not the not the Hercules. But anyway, you were doing it like the Hercules clap. Hercules, Hercules. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so um, so anyway, that's kind of how it started. I don't know if that answers your question, but um, yeah, it does. It's it's. I, great, I created a web page. Great, I created a Facebook page. I should say. Great story. And uh, and then we got someone to I commissioned a uh, artist to draw our our mule because whiskey the mule the bourbon fuel mule and then I used to put out a bunch of um like tonight show type of like um what are they called um trailers like, yeah trailers I used to put those oh, out cool. all the time yeah. but it that became way too much extra work for me uh to be honest with you i can, I can, I, I can imagine dude because the majority of them are oh, they were all spectacular they were all good thank you i appreciate it. uh but yeah. it was just way too much and then I, and then like with even the people that have shown interest in us they're like wow i can't believe you guys do this twice a week and we do we do it and what i have loved most about it is actually watching people like mark to be honest with you who mark and I mean, I can look at all of these guys and go, I feel like I could go to any place in the world with Mark or any place in the world with Billy or Mal or Rob or whatever. And we're going to be besties. We really are. We're really friends. Absolutely. Um, and that connectivity that had had that we had drawn and grown from the need of having that social interaction came to fruition. And honestly, I would put this bar against this virtual bar against any bar in the world. And I think we're hands down going to win. Oh yeah. I really do. Yeah. I mean, and for me, it's like the same thing. It's like, I've been in the group three-ish, four-ish weeks, somewhere around there. I already know when my wife and I fly into Fort Lauderdale or Miami to go down to uh, Key West, I- I'm going to be meeting up with Billy and hanging out with him. You'll be at the Dirty if, Rabbit. No, if I so. end up in anywhere, oh, yes. anywhere around any of these guys, we're going to be hanging out. Oh, yes. We're going to be having oh, a great time. Hey, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when you said that, Jonathan's face lit up. He's like, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so John, Jonathan's our resident gangster. Through, through, <laughs> through this, I'm going to Jonathan's uh, Kentucky Derby party. I went to my wife and said, hey, you want to go to Kentucky Derby party? She's like, can I buy a hat and make a dress? Oh, there you go. She's <laughs> all for it. <laughs> so, so the rest, the, the the second part of your question, I would rather it be at be a response from the other participants, yeah. partitioners of the group. So yeah. I don't care who takes. Well, I, I I'll, I'll start it off. I will say, uh, Jody had sent me a message about the the group. I said I need diversity. Yeah. He, he got a call from HR and they need to, he needs to pick things up. So I said, sure, I'll check it out. And I wasn't, I won't use the word reluctant, but I didn't know much about it. Um, and from the first show, I think I was really kind of hooked um, because we had a lot of like minded people, despite our political views and where we stand. And I really do love the fact that we we kind of give each other a hard time when it's deserved, you know. Um, and I don't know. I've been on the show ever since. And, you know, I, I would be upset if any of you guys came anywhere near Miami and didn't get in contact with me in some way, shape or form. So you guys are almost obligated. You know, if you're in West Palm Beach South, if you guys don't call me, you're going to have a problem. So well that that'll never happen, but I will say this. He he made a comment. I just want to put this comment out. He made a comment that, you know, I've been on the show ever since, ever since then. And yet every time I have to put Eastern Standard Time for for Billy. Because I like to give you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> so so the big question I have is how did how did uh, Jody and Billy got get connected for you to message him and try to bring him on? Um I had put posted a I had started posting videos on a couple of different bourbon pages uh, with some of the food that I made alongside some bourbon and a cigar and you know he just couldn't resist my my charm and my sexiness the sexual chocolate he just that's I all true it. it's all I absolutely totally true. get it man totally. you, uh, you, you 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 posted a picture of your wife didn't you that's what gonna... <laughs> yeah that's exactly what <laughs> <laughs> 
So what, anyone else wanna, wanna uh, so, chime in? Jump in. So I, 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 honestly, I don't know, but I will, here's my assumption with a capital ASS. Um, so <laughs> I post a lot and in, in, I post in different bourbon groups. I mean like 50 million of them. I feel bad for the Godfather because I swear he and I are in at least 10 different groups together. So he sees my shit 10, 12 times a day. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I feel bad because I added them in a couple. And so now it's even more. But um, typically when I post, I, it's too much shit going on in the world. Excuse the French, but it's too much shit going on in the world. Hmm. We don't need that foolishness. We got COVID, no, we got politics, we got wars, we got this, that, and the other. Yeah, hey, look. I love guns, but I don't post my guns and, and I don't post my guns. I lost all mine in a recent boating accident on the old Hickory Lake. <laughs> it was it was re- it was recent about 10 months ago, dude. You need a you need a new No, life. it was it, it happened in November. But yeah, we have, we gotta talk about that. I'm about to cry. November fourth is when I when I when I lost all of them. For whatever but, reason, so, I took my entire safe on a boat and it just sunk. I hope that's a joke. Probably too heavy. Too heavy. <laughs> joking right now i'm gonna cry for him if he's not but so i i post a lot of different groups but when i post my posts are typically they're about me i will often make fun of myself um i end every post with stay safe i don't give a shit if you're for a mask or not I, I still want you to be i still want you to stay safe um enjoy your juice i don't care if you don't like blends i don't care if you like 107 or you hate 107 i don't give a shit i like it that's all that matters so I don't, I don't, by the way, the best weller is foolproof. Just going to say, Oh, that's great stuff. But yeah. I don't, I don't feed into the, the negativity with bourbon. Mm. If I like it, I post it. If yep. you know certain things I don't post, I don't like it, but there's no need for me to come when you're posting and talk about how it's always oh, it's drain pour. I, mm. I, I really hate that phrase drain pour. I'm not pouring yeah, shit out. I'm paying for it. I yeah. Don't me too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, it's I'm not, with it's you. not I'm true. I, I have some, I give away. David has received so many bottles yeah. from now, me. Again, I'm just like, I, can you take I, this? <laughs> I got about 30 to 40 bottles that I don't really like. You know what I'll do with them? I'll marinate a steak with them. They will go in some cookies. <laughs> it's I, I, I'm with Mark on that, but there it's is, there is, there is the one There is one that ended up being a drain for. There was, was Jack that. Daniels, wasn't it? No, I it was Greek water. I told, I told Billy, I told Billy offline, that I have some that most would consider a, a drain for. I will never mm. post negativity about it. So mm-hmm. in terms of my presence in bourbon groups, everybody knows me for my t-shirts. I get spotted. I got spotted the other day. I was in, uh, I was in Total Wine. Um, I was picking up a, uh, a concierge rum pick. I had four people start talking to me. Hey, Mark. I have no clue who they are. They had masks on. <laughs> I don't know who they are. They know me from, the, from the, the Arizona bourbon groups. I get spotted in Atlanta with the Atlanta bourbon group. I have no clue who half the guys are. I don't care. We talk. And one of them actually told me they enjoyed the show the last two weeks, which I was happy to hear. But Excellent. I, you know, my thing is there's too much negativity in the world. Mm. This is my safe space. Leave yep. me the fuck alone when I'm talking about my bourbon. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Hello. All right. So let's, uh, well, I'm sorry. If you got more, go ahead. No, I'm that's sorry. it. Just, just, you know, when we're talking bourbon, let's talk bourbon. Let's have fun. Or if you don't. If we don't all agree on it, cool. We got different palettes. Someone I posted the other day about the new Maker's Mark FA01. Uh, I don't like it. Okay, well, I didn't ask for your opinion, but thank you. I like it. <laughs> Peace and blessings. Well, you know, that's funny you Absolutely. said because one of my big things is, is I, you know, you can knock Blanton's all you want. I'm still going to buy it by the case each and every time that I buy it. Um, I find it, it's, it's fantastic. Yes, do I think yeah. it's being driven up by price? Of course I do. Do mm. I think stag? I mean, you tell me one person that you know personally that's bought stag outside of Jay Cooper probably for for MSRP. You're not going to find that person. All right. Yeah. Unless it was a lottery pick. Yeah, junior as well. Same thing. Yeah. And unless it's a lottery pick. And 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 if it's a lottery mm. pick, you didn't get it free either. You didn't still didn't pay for what you wanted. You had to pay more in a byproduct to put yourself into the lottery because I put myself in the lottery, man. We talked about that in one of the shows, like 84 that, that I've never won anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so other people on the show, what, what, what has brought you to the show and what, what keeps you here and what, what, what do you enjoy about what makes this part of your weekly schedule? Boredom brought me to the show. Oh, I'm glad you said (laughs) that. And and boredom boredom keeps them here. (laughs) So, 
And, and I, it, we've talked about it. You know, I, I was li- living in Ohio uh, uh, in a, a townhouse and COVID hit and I was the, uh, my, my roommate had the, who was helping me run an account went away and it's just me in this town, townhouse and all I had was Wi-Fi internet. So I just logged, I was part of the Bourbon, na- Bourbon Nation Facebook page and, and their Facebook live feed popped up one night and I just sat there and watched it typed a few questions into it after the show ended I get an email from Jody saying hey why don't you come on a show with us on Wednesday okay that's (laughs) just a random Facebook find on a on a bourbon page and since then, it's it was it was addressed to Old Shetty, and they said, "Oh no, no, fetch Rob along as well." <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so I, mean, I do got to I do got to explain Old Shitty. So, um, mm. when we were in our infancy, um, we uh, I, I was like, you know, our story and Old Shitty, or I'm sorry, Shitty's Shitty Cooler's story is very they they, they intertwine. They, there's definitely a, a correlation there between the two of us. They started because of almost the very same thing, like because of the Yeti fanboys and stuff. And they wanted, they were like, what's wrong with just like a, a regular Coleman cooler that has, I mean, like, like really like who wants to, I mean, like if you're not going camping every day, what do you need a thousand dollar cooler for, you know? And, and I happen to agree with that philosophy, to be honest with you. I, I love to camp, but I don't own a Yeti I own three freaking Coleman's that probably, uh, who knows they're, blue and whatever yeah it, just like that you know there's no reason to have a bunch of a bunch of nonsense well rob came on the show and every time behind him he always had old shitty right next like right over his shoulder like it was always sitting on this right behind him on the on the whatever he was at whatever hotel he was in it was sitting on the, the thing right behind him like and, a, like a parrot like a parrot yeah, on like a parrot yeah so i was like that's old shitty right there there so i reached out to him uh we corresponded i know they watched the show um but we haven't got to the point where uh, I, I don't want anything from him. Like, I don't want a sponsorship from him. Hell, we already sponsor him. Every single show says starring old shitty, <laughs> you know, so I don't need their sponsorship. I, I, I would like to have maybe some hats from them, you know, something we can just wear as paraphernalia or something like that. But we only have a few more minutes. So, um, and, and so I want to end the show with this. Um, this is the 100th episode. I know we didn't get to talk to everybody. Hopefully we answered your question, Jeff, but I want to ask this question to leave us all with. Well, I got a quick question because sure, go ahead. Mal, was, Mal was in the beginning. We need to hear the Mal Jody story. If we hear only one more story from the connection, we need to hear the Mal Jody story. Jody story. Do you want to go with that or do you want me to? Well, so what had happened is. Some um, up, yeah. Yeah. So what happened is it, we, we met in Playa de Carmen. We were on both on holiday, having a vacation, this, that, and whatever. And how we became besties. Was, I, was on uh, the, I, was, I was on my honeymoon. Yeah, he was on his honeymoon. Yeah, I, yeah, was, I, was I, was, I was with uh, one of our band participants. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and that's a whole new story. It is. It is. Oh but, uh, but anyway, so I was there and there was this old dude. First off, we're staying in a European type uh, style resort. And European, they have two things in common, banana hammocks and topless, all of it, all right, all yeah. the time, all right? And so it's never anything you want to see for either party. Like, you don't sit around like a wife or a, or a husband or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it might be, and go, I can't wait to see no. this or that. <clears throat> there's not. Like, it's, it's the worst of both, all right? So anyway, there's like this 105-year-old man up there. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's in the pool area, and... You have to, you're supposed to take a shower before you get in the pool and this, that, whatever. And he's in a banana hammock and that thing is just sagging. Like it's probably, it looks like it's like four sizes too big, but maybe he's filling it up. I don't know. But anyway, that thing's sagging and he's taking a shower and he's taking like this long eclectic shower. Like it's the longest shower you've ever seen or heard in your life or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like you can't even fathom the showers. They like me if I'm alone in the house and, you know, I got some new things happen. Yeah. It, 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 it's a long shower. So I'm at the bar and there's a band participant and and then mal and sharon are at the bar and we're all we're all at the bar having a good time and i see it and it's 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 only us at the bar 
And little did I know, Mal couldn't even swim. So, I mean, it's like, we're, and the bar is in the water, all right? So, pool bar, yeah. yeah, it's pool bar. It's in the water. So, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. This is freaking awesome. You don't need to swim. You don't need to swim to use a, cool, uh, a pool bar, by the way. Yeah, kids. you come in right it's there fine, by the steps, fine. and it's, it's never more than probably three feet deep. Um, and you sit up on these little stools, don't, and you're sitting there and you're ordering stuff and we're having drinks. And so we see this and me being <laughs> the reasonable American guy I am, I swim over and I'm like, it's gotta be shower time. So I have on like just normal board shorts, but as I get out of the water, I pull them things up into the butt crack to make like a, like a, like a whale tail and, and, and the waistband down. And, and the weight, waistband down. Yeah, and the waistband down so you can see, because you could see part of his crack. And and there, there's probably five or so shower heads, but there was only you one could, next you to him. Just see, you couldn't just see this guy's crack. You could see this guy's breakfast. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, so I had to emulate my newfound hero. So I got up there and I started showering too. And, and, and with my shorts pulled way the, I mean, like he was probably going, can you remember that, that dirty American guy? That guy, that, he was stupid. Like, who wears shorts like that? He was probably thinking that. And and me, I was purposely doing it. So we, after that, after that incident, we decided we were going to be best friends forever. And there you go. That's how we came up. With it. Yeah. it was, yeah, that was, that was a. That was culmination was of a, our relationship. That was a drink fuel day. Um, yeah, taking yeah, yeah. the, taking the, uh, the, the piss out of a lot of people, but that's kind of where it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We realized that I might have relatives in England. And it was mild. We have the same. Yeah. We, sh- we we share the same type of haircut. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I got a buddy of mine. Same thing, except uh, I had taken my son on holiday to America. That's vacation in, in America. I yes, we know him, that. I took him to Grand Cayman for his graduation. That was his graduation gift. Man, I met a guy from Ireland, and we stayed in touch for a while. But he kind of dropped off of social media. I didn't see what happened. He's popped up recently. I guess I need to reach out to him. I had to talk to him in a minute. Well, Mal and I yeah, were, were both on MySpace together. We were we besties were. On, on MySpace. I know. Uh, you guys yeah. and Tom. Yeah, yeah, Tom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, guys. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, I was going to hit a rapid fire question, but four minutes over, I'd like to end the discussion with that. Hey, I'll just do all- it. Just do it. If it's rapid fire, it'll be over in two minutes. All right, rapid fire. Uh, Jonathan, favorite drink of the year that you've gotten? Oh, dang. Um, come back to me. Yeah, come back to me. Um, yeah. Jeff. Favorite drink? Just just to play with Jody, I'm going to say a Jack Daniels single barrel. <laughs> so he didn't really want to answer this. Uh, Rob. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go with the Maker's Mark Grandpa's Toddy. Nice. Um, that, that's a good one, by the way. That's a real good one. Uh, Mark? Um, the Maker's Mark 2020. Was it the uh, PR5? Yep. Whoop. That might be my 2020. Yep. Uh, Corey? Oh, man. Oh. Uh, come back to me, too. Put on the oh, spot. Lord. It's going to take more than two minutes. Uh, Billy? <laughs> I agree with Billy. Actually, that was going to be mine too. Is uh, Leaper's Fork uh, Bottle and Bond 101 or 100 proof? Um, that is the best. It's, it's the only, in my opinion, only true Tennessee bourbon, and it is fantastic. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. We did an entire show. The greatest bourbon from Tennessee. Period. Uh, Mal. Got two spectacular picks from the British Bourbon Society, but I'm not going to include those. I'm going to say Blanton uh, straight from the barrel or Bomberger. Uh, Bumburger is, is fantastic. Bumburger. No one's ever had Bumburger. that. Dude, that's, that's, a it, hidden, that's, it. that's a hidden gem in all of the bourbon world. And I purposely didn't choose like GTS uh, 2020, 19, or even when I had tried uh, Eagle Rare 17, 2020. I, didn't, I purposely didn't pick those because I wanted to choose something that was a little bit more readily accessible, definitely for our Middle Tennessee mm-hmm. crew. That's the reason why I took the Leaper's Fork as well. All right, so we're back to you, Jonathan. So I'm actually going to go with Stag Junior. It was a new experience for me this this year. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go with that one. And if you ever come over to my house, I have, I have a few bottles. We could have those together, and we could enjoy them by the pool. But anyhow, uh, Corey, I'll uh, I'll go with um, 
one of the uh, the OWA store picks from a store here in uh, Middle Tennessee, up in Hendersonville, uh, Poor Boo. Yeah, I had another antique store pick that's probably been my favorite bottle that I've had in quite some time. My favorite ever um, Weller pick was a antique, and it was a store pick as well. Um, I have we did a whole entire show on on that, guys. This has been fantastic, fun as always. Um, any alibis before we go? No, I'm gonna qu- I'm gonna pour a quick bomb burgers before we uh, before we say goodbye. Just thinking about it. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, cheers, everyone. Everyone, be good to yourself. Be, be safe. Be yourself, and, yep. And always have Thanks, fun. Guys. Congrats on 100, gentlemen. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Happy 100. I like 100.